introduce the Executive Associate Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Raul Curto. Thank you for being here. Good morning. It is a real pleasure uh, for me to be here and have the opportunity to speak to you today. I give you a warm welcome to the college and to the University of Iowa. My uh, two older daughters learned about the importance and significance of statistics at an early age. When they were in junior high school, we used to travel around the state so that they could play in junior tennis tournaments. They were both uh, tennis players. One day in Ames, Iowa, one of them lost the match but won more games and more points. In the middle of life is so unfair, how can I win more games and points and I still lose the match? We reflected on where we are the keys for success. Every tennis player knows that tennis is a lot about losing and a little about winning. As a matter of fact, every professional player outside the top 20 today has a losing record. Still, she wanted to understand what had happened. After considering the technical, strategic, strategic and athletic abilities of both players, we landed on a very natural question. What is the minimum number of points a player must win to win a match? More precisely, what is the minimum percentage of all points played that a winning player must have? We first look at ATP records, Association of Tennis Professionals records, and discover that a typical professional tennis match shows a 52%, 48% split for the winner. Is that close? 52 to 48 on the average. We then thought about the abstract problem. How can someone win a three-step match while losing the maximum percentage of points? Well, one can create scenarios so that each game lost is lost at love, and each game won is won by the minimum margin of points, two points. The set lost is lost six to zero, with each game lost at love. The two sets won are won in a tie break, with each game uh, won gotten by the minimum difference of two points, and each lost game lost at love. Well, you get the idea. When you win a game, you, you, do, you do it in the closest possible way, when you lose a game, you do it as badly as possible. When you do the math, the minimum percentage of points won is a mere 36.9%. So it is actually possible to win a tennis match by winning about 37% of the points. The next question was, well, what is the probability that someone could lose the first set 6 to 0, losing all 24 points, and still come back and win in two tie breaks? Not very high, of course, right? <laughs> after, considerable, after considerable reflection, we returned to statistics and concluded that using them was the best predictor for the outcome. In short, what we learned is that math and probability could help us understand the hypothetical boundaries of the problem, but stats could present us with a much more realistic view of the situation. When you have lost the first set 6 to 0, 24 straight points, it is not very helpful to know that you can still win the match. It is much more helpful to analyze, through statistics, what kind of changes you should make to turn things around. <clears throat> My daughter still remember, to this day and many years later, the day when we did the calculation and how it influenced their views of competitive tennis. They learned to appreciate, through statistics, something that professional players have known for years. It's all about the percentages and about creating opportunities during each point to tilt the percentages in their favor. Under Professor Joe Lang's leadership, the Department of Statistics and Actuarial Science at Iowa is heading in the right direction, is building nicely, and is maintaining a well-earned reputation. As Dean Jalali mentioned before, we have programs that have national and international visibility. Paramount in all of this is the towering figure of Professor Bob Hogg, who, when with his cheerful and positive attitude, served as a role model for all of us who had the privilege of knowing him. I will always remember our encounters in the hallway right outside the dean's office. Time and time again, he would check up on me and make sure that I was still doing math. For him, <laughs> administration was ephemeral, mathematical research was not. He would not pretend to be my mentor, although he was, but he definitely cared about me and just wanted to make sure that I would not fall into the dark side of academia. 
I always remember him uh, if, and a phrase that he had posted on his door. Quality is remembered long after the price has been forgotten. Once again, a warm welcome to Iowa and Iowa City. Happy 50th for the department and my very best wishes for you to you in this wonderful conference. Thank you.